Okay, so usually I have a big spiel at the beginning, but I have to say this. I usually talk too much and I have to rush at the end, so I just want to say what we're doing and why we're doing it. So today we are going to make another project using Firebase databases. The real thing that you should be learning from these lessons is one, how to save data into your database, which is really just a few lines of code, and then how to get the data out of your database. We call that uh, writing data and reading data, right? So we want to learn how to write and read. That's it. So this is another app that we did that last time with the button game. Today we're doing it with this project. Today's project is to make a university prep alumni page. All right, you guys are almost graduated now. A lot of you have senior send off next week um, and you might lose touch. So we want to make a web page here where students can enter in their name, the college they're at, and their picture, and they could submit it. And then like, it'll make these nice little cards. So you can see like where everyone went to college. And maybe, maybe on your end, you can add a few more pieces of information, like their email, their phone number. When they press submit, you could have, they'll have all this information about everyone. And it'll be like the central hub for people to, you know, have their data, have, have their alumni information. You can stay in touch. It's wonderful. It's about connectedness, guys. So without further ado, Let's get started on this project. So the first thing you should be going to is Firebase. We're gonna start here, we're gonna to get to get started. Once again, the beginning is just setting up our database. So we're gonna call this University Prep uh, Alumni. Because you guys are almost alumni, you're alumni. You almost graduated, you're alumni. You're almost alumni. All right. So now it's creating your database for you. Blah, blah, blah. Things are happening. Great. Wonderful. Wish you could move a little faster. Um, let's just talk about the site again. Really, the functionality should be this. They press submit. And the minute they press submit, a card should show up, which adds their name to a list of all the other students who already submitted their data. So I've added a little bit of styling already. But as they press submit, we should get more and more students. That's it. So submit, save the database, then show up on screen. Simple concept. All right, we're going to continue. All right, and you might remember we have to go to web. Doesn't matter. Let's call this one alumni. We're going to register our application. Okay, copy and paste all of this. We're going to put that in the head where it says add Firebase here. Okay, format it because this looks so ugly. Oh, what did I do wrong? Did I not copy the whole thing? Oh, yeah, I copied too much. Okay, add this here. Formatted. You might remember now we have to pick out the specific library that we want. So we're going to copy and paste this line. So which Firebase product do we want, guys? We want the Firestore. We're not doing authentication, so not this one. That's for auth. We're doing Firebase Firestore. Remember, you have to pick the right one. So if you're working with databases, Firebase Firestore, authentication, you're doing Firebase auth. If you're doing both, you can put both. Okay, wonderful. Super, we're all set up to do our database. Now, here is where we actually have to like create the database in Firebase. So you click here where it says database, create database, and we want to start this in test mode. Remember, test mode is totally insecure, meaning anyone in the whole universe can write data or read data for your database. We don't have anything too valuable going on right now, but if you ever do have valuable information that you don't want people to like be able to read, write, or even delete, you want to start to put that into production mode, read up on how to do that. All right, this should create our database. And just a reminder, remember, the way this database works is that you have these things called collections, which are the folders, like those are the different folders you could have. And then inside of them, you put, uh, what's it called? Documents. And those documents are like objects with different pieces of data. So collections are folders, and then you put documents within that. All right, we're set up. We're looking pretty good. So the next part of today is just to make it so that when we press the submit button, it's going to read all this data right here, all right? And then after we've got it so it like gets this data, we're going to then send it over to the database. So let's get started on our coding part of today now that we got our database shut, started up. So the first part is to make that button do something. We're gonna add an event listener to it. So we're gonna say let submit button equal document query selector, okay? And I think the ID is submit. You can check it out over here. Yes, the ID is submit. The next part is to add an event listener. So we're going to say submit button dot add event listener. Listen for a click. And as always, we want to just do something simple to make sure we got it working. Console log 
hi. Okay, so let's make sure that we can get the word hi to pop up when we press the submit button. Hi, great. So that is working. Now the next part is we want to create the function that gets the data from those inputs and then sends it over to the database. So I'm going to say function save alumni to database. Just making that up. And in this function, remember, get the data from the inputs, send it over to the database. So first we want to get the data from the inputs. So we create three variables. Let name equal document dot query selector hashtag and I think the first input has an ID of name and then to get the value out of it we have to put dot value so if you look here yes the ID is name the next one's college the next one's pick so let's just do a little copy and pasting two three so the next part is we want to get the first we get the student's name then we get the college that they're going to and then they can give us a link to a picture of themselves can't actually, right now we're not learning how to actually store files, like picture files. We're just going to get like a link to the pic, but that's fine. And now just to make sure that we are actually getting that data out of the these inputs, let's just console log each one to make sure that we're doing this correctly. So we're in console log name, console.log college, and then console.log pic. Now if I press the submit button, you'll be like, wait, nothing's happening. Remember, you have to run the function. So after, well, remember, with this event listener, we're going to say console log hi, and then we're going to run the function save alumni to database. All right, now it's running. So if I press some, oh, there's no data there, so obviously it's not going to work. So let's do that. UB, University of Buffalo. And then a picture, who cares for now? And you'll see that all the data has been console log. It is working. So now that we've got the data out of the inputs, we now have to send it over to our Firebase database. Not too hard to do. It's as simple as first creating a variable called DB, stands for database. And we're going to say Firebase.Firestore. A way to think about this is Firebase is like all the Firebase functions. We imported that at the top of our index, right? That's all the Firebase. And then Firestore is like specifically just the database part of it. So we're storing all the fire the database functions in this variable called database. The next part is to actually do something with the data. So we're going to say in the database, we're, we're going to go to the database and in the collection of alumni. Remember, this is basically saying go to the database, go to the folder of alumni, and then add the following data. So you do uh, parentheses, then curly braces. Now we're going to aim, add the data in the form of an object. All right. And remember, that's key value parents. And so we have to have three key values. The three key values are the student name, right? That's our key. And then what we want to save there is the name. Okay, comma, the student college. What we want to save there is the college, right? That's the second piece of data. And then the third thing is the student pick. And what we want to save there is the pick. So what this should do is go to the database and save these three pieces of data over there. So let's make sure this is working. So let's go Benjamin Siegel, you be. And let's go actually get a picture of myself to make sure this is working. So Benjamin Siegel teacher. If you haven't already Googled that all the time. Let's go to images. There I am on the internet. I'm going to copy the image address. And actually that's what I want to submit here. So in this pick part, we want to actually submit like a link to a picture, not the file. We're not there yet. So we press submit. It console logs and let's make sure it went to the database. Let's reload this page. Okay. Give me a database. Yes. Okay. We are good to go. Sweet. All right. Now that we've got our database, it's looking really good here. We are saving our data so we can now save our, our alumni. The next part is to then show it to the user. So we get the users or we get the, our alumni. Next part is to show it to them. So great. It's in the database. This is good. We're halfway there. So the next part is to like show it to the on the screen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new function called update alumni list. And this is going to actually be the like the function that like updates the list of all the alumni on the screen. So how do we do this? First part is once again you say let db equals firebase dot firestore. Okay, and then 
let's just type this out. Let's go for it. So we're going to say db.collection. The collection that we're going to go into is the alumni in a collection, right? That's the folder we want to look for things. And then you just say dot get, and that actually gets all the data, okay? Now, once you've got it, you have to do something with it. So once again, this is kind of an asynchronous thing. Uh, so we're going to say this thing called dot then. Dot then is saying, once you've got the data, wait for it. And then once you've got it, do something with it. So the thing we're going to do is this. We're going to get this query snapshot. Oh, gosh. That was bad. Um, and we're going to do something with it. Now, with the query snapshot, remember, the query snapshot is actually all of the data. That's like everything. All right. What we want to do with it is we want to go through each document that's in it. So we use this thing called a for each loop. And we're going to look through each document and we're going to run another function on each document. Now, this is a lot. All right. But just keep in mind that what we're doing is this, we're getting all the data. And then with all the data, we're going through each document. All right. That's the key here. Then we're just going to say this, let data equal doc doc data. Okay. So that's, that's the first part of everything we're doing. Now, what do we want to do with that data? We want to show it to the user. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say document dot query selector. All right. Now that we got the dat our document data, let's go to alumni cards. Okay. Dot inner HTML equals, and then we're going to put some back ticks over here. Okay. This is good. Now, the reason I said hashtag alumni cards is alumni cards is right here. This is where we're going to put all the alumni. Now, in this, I've actually done a little styling in the CSS. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a div with a class uh, equal to card. All right. There's some styles attached to that. So that's why we have to give it that class. Uh, nothing crazy. Just like, you know, some simple stuff like a border. And then we're going to put those three pieces of data in this div. Okay. The three pieces of data are as follows. First thing we want to do is put the student name in an H5 tag. So let's do H5. And then we're going to interpolate. Remember, so data is all the data in a document. So here's a document and here's all the data inside of it. The first thing we want to show is the name. And the key for that is student name. So if we want to show like Benjamin Siegel, we have to say data, which is everything here, dot student name. So here, data dot student name. I'm going to be a little lazy here. Let's copy and paste this. Okay. Okay. And then the next part is we want to show the college in a P tag. So if you look here, we called it student college. Okay. Student college. And then the last part is the image. So we're going to say this IMG SRC equals in quotes interpolate. And then the last one was the student of data that student pick. Okay, and close that tag. All right, and student pick is from here. That's how we save it. That was the key. Now, the last thing is there was an ID just to make sure. So let's give this image a class equal to picture. Once again, I just put a few, I put some styling so they all come out the same size. And then let's see. Oh, and the last part is we've got the function, it's not running. So we want this to run in two places. First, we want to run every time we open the page. So we're going to say window dot onload equals. Let's just take this. All right, no parentheses. And so what we should see is when we reload this. Hey, look, it showed up. My first person, Benjamin Siegel, UB, in this nice little car with that right here. Now we can add another student. Let's say uh, your mom. She went to uh, UA, University of Albany, and a picture of her is this other picture. Let's save this image address, put that here, submit it. And now if we reload the page, oh, sorry, let me um, let me do something right here. We got a little sum sum. We have to do plus equals. That's why it just overwrote it. Okay, now let's reload it. And we got two. Okay, that's it for this video. We got ourselves an online nest. Yeah.